In this video, we're going to take a look at doing JavaScript module bundling using two popular tools, Webpack and Rollup. Specifically, we're going to bundle ECMAScript or ES modules. This is a common technique today is to use ECMAScript modules to write your code and then bundle it or transpile it into a format that's convenient for use in the browser or node. ECMAScript modules provide exports and imports. Pretty simple, an export uh, provides something that another module can use, which is then imported uh, and consumed in a different module. Exports come in two different flavors. You have the named exports, where there can be several of them per module, or a default export, where there's just one per module. Here's an example of some named exports. So the square.js module is going to export two things, the square root function and the square function. So this is a pretty common case where you have a module and you want to export a bunch of utility functions or maybe a group of constants. Uh, and so you use named exports to do that. Default exports are a little bit different. There can only be one per module. So here the cube.js file is going to just export a single function. And if you notice, there isn't any name to this function. We're going to actually assign the name for the function when we import it in the import statement. So here's an example of some imports. So we've imported both of the named exports out of the square.js module. And we've pulled in the cube function from the cube.js module. When you put all this together, you end up with uh, a dependency tree of modules. The one we're most interested in for bundling is the entry. So this is the root of our dependency tree. This is the first script that's going to be evaluated. We're going to look for any imports that it does and then just walk that tree looking for additional imports. So we're going to send that entry and the entire dependency tree through the tool, which ultimately is going to produce our bundle uh, that we can send out to the browser. Both of these tools are capable of pulling in things other than JavaScript, so you can bundle CSS, SAS, JSON, image files, all sorts of things you can add into your bundling process. Uh, but just to be able to compare the tools in kind of a simple way, we're going to focus on JavaScript. Let's start by taking a look at the files in our library. We've defined a package.json. Uh, we've included two dependencies, Rollup and Webpack. Those are the two tools that we're going to use to do our bundling. Our source is pretty simple. We've got a format module that's got some formatting functions, because uh, who doesn't need another wrapper for uppercase and lowercase? Uh, we've got a left function that's just going to take the left of a string, and another file that has a right function, which is just going to take the right of a string. So just some example functions that look sort of like a library. The entry script is our strings.js, and so all we're doing here is just re-exporting everything from the other modules. So this is going to give us the entry point to our library. So the first thing we're going to do is use Webpack CLI to do our bundling. So we're just going to execute the Webpack CLI on the command line, give it a couple of parameters. The first being our entry point, so that's our strings.js module in the source folder. We have to tell it where we want to put everything, so let's put this into the dist folder, and then we have to give it a file name for the bundle itself. So let's call this webpack bundle.js. When we run that, we're going to see some output out of the webpack. This tells us that we did create the webpack bundle.js, and we can see that it actually has all four of the modules in our source folder. So we pointed it at strings, and then the import statements pulled in the rest. Now if we take a look at this bundle file, immediately you're going to see a bunch of stuff that doesn't look anything like our source code. So we're going to examine that in a minute. But if we dig a little bit deeper, we do see our source code is actually in here. There's our write function and our upper and lower function. So we've got our source code in here, but now we need to take a look at this in a little more detail at this Webpack bundle. So I've cleaned up the code in our bundle a little bit and formatted it just to make it a little easier for us to kind of see what's happening. Let's just hide a little bit of the noise here so that we can get a picture of what's happening. 
When we do this, it's a little easier to see that this is just one big iffy, an immediately invoked function expression. So when this module gets loaded, that function at the top is going to be invoked immediately, and its one input parameter, modules, is just this array of functions down at the bottom. That array of functions actually represents all of the modules that we imported. So this is our code. Each module in our bundle has been wrapped inside one of these functions to provide private scope for all of the contents of the module. There's two parameters in this function wrapper that are really important to us. The first is the webpack require function. So this is what the module is going to use to get a hold of exports out of some other module. And the other one is the webpack exports object. So this is what we're going to attach exports to from the module. So let's look through what the module loader is actually doing for us. The two keys here are the installed modules object. So this is just a cache of all the modules that have already been loaded. And then the main webpack require function. So this takes the place of say the require function in CommonJS or the import statements out of ES modules. It's going to provide kind of the same functionality. Any module inside our bundle can use this require function to pull in other modules that it needs. When this thing gets executed, if you look at the bottom line in this function, we're actually calling webpack require on bundle number zero, so that's our entry point and we're returning anything that it exports. So that's kind of the big picture of what's happening in Webpack. Webpack is going to run this require function. It's going to walk that entire tree, calling this Webpack require function over and over, loading additional modules until eventually everything inside the bundle is going to be loaded. So it looks a little bit complicated, but build yourself a little library like this, run Webpack on it, and take a little bit of time to really look at this in detail and I think you'll find that it's actually pretty simple code and it's not nearly as intimidating once you've had a chance to go through it. So as this gets more complicated you're definitely going to want a configuration file rather than having to specify everything on the command line. So let's just whip up a quick webpack config file. I'm just going to use a code snippet here so you don't have to watch me type everything and we're just going to export this definition object for the configuration. We're going to give it the same entry point as last time, strings.js. We're going to output everything into the dist folder and again we're just going to call it webpack bundle.js. There's obviously tons more that you can do with webpack but it's really outside the scope of this video so for now we're just going to execute this to prove that we can do it with a config file and because we use the convention name of webpack.config.js all we have to do is run the Webpack CLI and it's going to output exactly the same bundle for us. So now that we've done this with Webpack and taken a close look at the output of the Webpack file, let's see what this whole process looks like in Rollup. Again, we're going to do this directly in the command line to start. And with Rollup, we're going to specify first our output. So this is actually the bundle name and the distribution folder all in one. So we're going to put this in dist under rollup bundle. We have to give it a module format so for now let's just say it's going to be an ES module as the output and finally we give it our entry point. When we look at this bundle the first thing you're going to see is that it looks very clean. There's no loader, there's no extra wrappers. This is about as pure as it gets. So this is basically the same as if you had copied and pasted this together yourself to create just a single ES module. Just like with Webpack, we can create a rollup configuration file and it's going to be a similar process. We're going to create a file called rollup.config.js. One difference is this is actually going to be an ES module with a default export. So this one's pretty simple. We're going to specify our entry point, which was our strings.js file the destination for the bundle file, and its format. So let's run this on the command line again. And this time we do have to provide one command line parameter, dash C. That's going to tell Rollup to use a configuration file. 
So if we run this, we can look and just verify that we do get exactly the same results. Now we just want to make a small change to our roll-up configuration. We're going to do this so that we can make a little bit easier comparison directly to what we're seeing out of Webpack. So we're just going to change our output format here from ES to IFI. This is going to wrap our module in a function expression and just store the results in a variable called strings. So this is like the old global variable module format. Let's execute this now on the command line and take a look at the new output. So you can see the inside of the module looks pretty much the same. We've got our same functions. The style of the exports is a little bit different, but this is going to look very much like what Webpack does, minus all of the loader overhead at the top. The reason that Rollup was able to create such a clean looking bundle is that it used scope hoisting on the imported modules. So the modules like left, right, and format were lifted into the same scope as the entry module. With Webpack 3, we can actually add a plugin that'll do the same type of scope hoisting for us. So what we'd like to do is take our original bundle that had four modules and lift modules one through three into the entry module and create something that looks just like what we got out of Rollup. So we're gonna modify our Webpack config file and we're going to add a plugin into the plugins array. This is the module concatenation plugin from Webpack 3. Once we've added the plugin, we can just rerun it on the command line and take a look at our new output. Now immediately you can see something different here. We've still got the same Webpack bundle.js, but if you notice below, we don't have four modules listed anymore. Now we only have the entry module, strings.js, plus three concatenated modules. So what we're hoping to see is that inside the bundle file, we really only have a single module, and that module should look very much like the one that Rollup created for us. Now you can see something that does in fact look a lot like what we saw before. We've got the contents of left, right, and format.js modules all inside that strings.js module. In fact, let's just put these side by side and see what they look like. Let's just take a few of these comments out of here. And with that done, you can see that the contents of the module out of Webpack is almost identical to what we got out of Rollup. The Webpack bundle does still have the loader up at the top, but that scope hoisting has really taken out a lot of the overhead in the overall bundle from Webpack. Now that you've seen some basic bundling with Webpack and Rollup, you might be wondering, which one of these should I use in my project? Both Webpack and Rollup can handle multiple input types. Webpack handles CommonJS and ES modules out of the box, and you can configure a thing called loaders that handles just about anything else you can imagine. Rollup was written from the ground up to handle ES modules, but you can add plugins that will also bring in common JS modules, so you can use any of the code that you find on NPM. Same goes for output types. Both Webpack and Rollup handle all the major module formats for output. As far as flexibility, I'd have to say that Webpack has the edge here. It has tons of features, it's really extensible, and it has a really large community of developers behind it. So that gives Rollup the edge and simplicity. Configuration, plugins, they're really simple and easy to use. It's very quick to get started with Rollup. If you want to use tree shaking, this is a feature that eliminates unused ES imports to shrink the size of your overall bundle. Both Webpack and Rollup will do this for you. Code splitting is a pretty important thing in larger web applications. So this allows you to create multiple output bundles. So in our trivial example here, we just did a single bundle, but in a large application, you might want to take all of your common libraries, common code that you wrote, 
and split that out in a separate bundle. Or maybe you have some breakpoints where you want to do asynchronous loading. So you load a, a small part of your application up front. And then as people hit certain features, then you load the code for the rest of those features. This is available in Webpack, and there's lots of options on how to configure it. But this is notably missing from Rollup. It wasn't supported in the version that we used in this video. So hopefully this gives you some ideas on which one might be more appropriate for your project. Rollup is a really good choice for smaller projects, I think. Uh, simple libraries, uh, anything where you don't need to do code splitting. And Webpack handles absolutely everything. So it's a good choice for just about any type of project. If you liked this video, please check out some of our other content at intertech.com slash blog.